So just last week, we removed this engine from a 2010 Subaru Impreza with just basic hand tools besides the engine hoist, obviously, and an engine stand. So now the next step is just disassembly so we can take the cylinder heads to a machine shop, replace the gaskets, and put everything back together. Now before I begin, I just want to quickly, if you take a look at the rear, or at the rear, you have this metal tube, and I just want to spray some PB Blaster before we begin because I'm worried that the uh, the nut here will strip so we'll let that settle and here we go so I'll start by just disconnecting the ignition wires now fortunately they are numbered so this is the driver side cylinders 2 and 4 so 2 is toward the front 4 is at the rear and then the passenger side as you can see I've already removed them you have number 1 and number three. Okay, so again, driver's side, passenger side. And if you follow those ignition wires, this is the rear of the engine now, you'll find the ignition coil held in by four 10 millimeter fasteners. Now right here also is a tube. This is just simply for the PCV valve. I'll just tuck this out of the way. And fortunately, wheeling around the engine, it's so light that if you do need to move it quite often, as I am, just to get the right angle here for the camera, quite simple. Okay. And in fact, it looks like just three. One, two, three fasteners, and the connection right here for the harness connector. Whoops. Now, ultimately, what I need to do is remove all of the electrical connections, disconnect them from the harness that it sits in. Okay, now if you get confused, in other words, we have an EGR connection here, you have another connection over here, and, and as you go throughout the engine, you'll find multiple connections. Although, although they typically fit in one location, what you can always do is just grab yourself some red paint and a Q-tip, or any paint, right? It doesn't really matter. If you have spray paint, just flip over the the cover of the spray paint and you can spray inside that cover and then just mark you know that so this goes here right real easy this one goes over here so when you put everything back together you won't get confused but again typically they just go in one location so you don't have to go too crazy but I'm just going to clean everything up here and then we'll start unbolting a couple of things and since I'm here, I'll go ahead and remove the EGR pipe. Let me just see if you don't have an adjustable wrench. It's roughly, looks like 21 millimeters. Okay. Don't forget to use PB Blaster WD-40. And what I'll do off camera is maybe shoot some air through there, make sure it's not clogged. And I have two fasteners right here. If you look at the main harness, this is the main electrical harness that plugs into the vehicle. And if you follow it, it's just attached here. These are 12 millimeter fasteners. And as you can see, this just clears away from the intake. Let's keep on going here. And holding down the intake, you have four fasteners on each side. So right here, one, these are 12 millimeter, three, and then there's a fourth one under the underneath this wire loom. Same thing on this end. I'm going to break them loose with a breaker bar. Then don't forget you have two grounds here and once you've removed all of the harness connectors check for the grounds in the front make sure everything is disconnected you can simply either lift up the intake or you can just place it on some wooden blocks I like to remove it just to make some extra room now we'll remove the timing cover here you have a number of 10 millimeter fasteners. These are rather delicate, so you may need an extractor kit if they do strip. Very, very delicate fasteners. Same with the valve cover fasteners. 
now what I need to do is rotate this timing belt. And there's a couple of markings. There's a marking here on the oil pump and a couple on these cam drives. So let me first rotate it, but right here, whoops, right here, you'll find this white mark on the oil pump. You need to bring that up to this guy right here. There's a little notch in the engine. We also have a notch here that needs to line up with this guy. There's another one over here that needs to line up with the block. I'll come in for a close-up in a moment. I'll just rotate this clockwise. Okay, so again, oil pump is marked up with this guy. Okay, this is the driver side cam marked up with this. And the passenger side, as you can see, it's marked up with this little notch right here. Now, of course, good time to replace the time belt if you need to. This was replaced around 30,000 miles ago. But this bearing, as you can see, it looks like there's some uh, weathering there. So I'm going to replace the bearings just in case. This is a 14 millimeter fastener. And using, again, a breaker bar just to break it loose. This is the hydraulic tensioner. This we will reuse. I actually bought a new one when I did the timing belt, but if you do need to replace it, factory, it's about $110 just for this, so quite pricey. We have a plastic cover right here, 10 millimeter fastener. Now this next part is probably the most difficult of the entire job, and that's you need to remove the 17 millimeter fastener, but you have to keep the sprocket from rotating. So you need a strap wrench. You can pick up a two pack for like 13 bucks. I'll have links for all the tools in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site if you need anything. I'm just going to place the wrench on here, get it, get a nice tight grip. And this, if you're familiar with my videos, everything is just basic hand tools, but I'm making an exception here because to remove this with a wrench while I'm trying to hold this is really, really hard. So I just have an impact here, cordless. There we go. Careful, I don't want this sprocket to rotate. Okay, now we'll take off this plastic cover. Now I'm just removing the spark plugs here. This is the passenger side. I'll start with removing the fasteners that hold down the valve cover and then we'll take a look at the head be gentle with these because they are delicate and this is the advantage always change your oil as you can see everything looks really good and now I'm just rotating the engine just a little bit here. So now you'll find six fasteners holding on the cylinder head to the engine block. Now these are 14 millimeter. We need a 12 point socket, okay? If you have a normal six point socket, it won't work. Make sure you have 12 point. 14 millimeter to break these loose, I will use a breaker bar. Also, let me just show you something. At least in my case, the engine Stan wants to walk, so I have it just butted up against my bench there because it just wants to roll because these are very, very tight. As you try to loosen it, the stand will swing. 
So just butt it against something or just have someone maybe put their, uh, their leg over there so it stops from rolling. So there's a sequence, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? So you'll crisscross fashion to loosen these up. Again, break a bar. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Super, super tight. Okay. Ah. Whew. I'm going to throw up my shoulder on this. Okay. Second thought, let me grab a pipe. These things are really tight. So what I'm doing is just taking a pipe. Give me a much longer handle. Make this a lot easier. There we go. Okay. And as you remove the fasteners, just keep a template of where they belong. You don't want to mix and match up the fasteners. Now I have the two top corner threads just a couple of turns still threaded in the block and I just want to lightly tap with a mallet just around the head. And with the cylinder heads removed along with the intake, you can really see how compact this engine is. I have to say it's very well thought out. The engineering is very, very good. Quite easy to work on. Just take your time, go slow, step by step. And it really is uh, quite enjoyable working on this engine. So now the next step for me is bringing these cylinder heads to a machine shop. Check for straightness, cracks, check the valves, clean them up, so on and so forth. Then we'll come back reinstall them on the engine. Once everything's put back together, reinstall the, the engine in the vehicle and we'll be up and running. So hopefully that'll be uh, quite soon. I hope to get these cylinder heads back. So until then, thank you for watching.